Great. So my name is Ross Yelsey. I'm an assistant director of admission and marketing here at Columbia Journalism School. I'd like to thank all of you for uh, tuning in uh, wherever you are in the world today for this uh, great program spotlight webinar about the MS in data journalism program. I'm really happy to have two faculty members in the program and a recent alum uh, to sh shed some insights into this program for you, go over some of the key aspects of you know what makes this a distinctive program for people interested in reporting and uh, using data as a key uh, reporting source. And so uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome uh, Professor Jonathan Soma, who's the director of the MS in Data Journalism program, and Professor Jumil Mehta, as well as June Kim, uh, a recent graduate of the program uh, who just graduated in August, so a couple months ago. And I thought I'd uh, ask a question first of uh, Professor Soma and Professor Mehta about um, what drew themselves to data journalism. Maybe tell the audience a bit about your own path into this particular area of the field. I feel like the tragic part for me is that I didn't come from journalism originally. Like I worked for the school newspaper in college, but I like drew a comic and wrote like album reviews and no real journalism. Uh, so I got into data journalism from the data visualization side of things where I was making pieces for like New York Times, Republica, um, doing like maybe some database backend stuff. Um, so very much in the data wrangling, data visualization. Uh, and then it turns out that journalism itself is amazing and magical and it's uh it is like nothing else so yes that was that was my path in um from the more technical side the more visual side as opposed to the more journalism -y side um yeah i also fell into journalism it wasn't um something i studied in school i, I came from computer science um, i was working on a project in school trying to analyze metaphors and language getting computers to understand language um, and I needed a data set. And so I used the congressional record as my data set. And I learned, I failed at my original task, but I learned a whole lot about Congress. Um, and so after I graduated, I went to work at Amazon as a software engineer, uh, really did not enjoy it. So I was looking for something that I really would enjoy um, and uh, fell in with some journalists. And I got a job at 538, which was like a stats and data driven news organization. Um, and so I worked there for many years. Um, both writing pieces, doing sort of what you would call traditional shoe leather reporting, but also building databases, uh, mostly focused on US politics. Uh, so worked with polls, public opinion, media, that kind of thing. And then uh, two years ago, Columbia called me. And so here, here's, I'm here now. <laughs> Great, thanks. And so the MS in data journalism is a relatively new program at Columbia Journalism School. I think it's about five years old now as an established degree program. Uh, maybe Soma and Drew could talk a bit about why it makes sense that we have a specialized degree for data journalism uh, specifically. Yeah, I'm happy, to, take this one first? Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to start on this. Um, so when I joined at 538, the industry was desperate for coders. Um, and I was like, I have no journalism background. I have a philosophy essay in my folio for my undergrad. And like, um, you know, I know how to code and that's that's all I've really got going for me. But at the time, the industry was desperately in need of coders and they were happy to hire people like me. Um, now things have changed. There's sort of a pipeline of journalists who know how to code. Um, and so I, I think that uh, both, you know, it, there's these two sets of skills that you really need to combine. And I think it's it, the sum is greater than the, the parts. Um, but also, I think that it to 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 work in this field now, um, it's a really good idea to have training across both sides, and this program provides uh, a solid foundation in both coding and data analysis, but also uh, journalism. Uh, so, Matt, you want to? Add to that. Yeah. So uh, unlike Jamel, who has a computer science background, I attempted to have a computer science background and I just hated all of my CS classes in college. And I was like, I'm not majoring this because this is awful. It's not relevant. Everything's terrible. And I think that something that is uh, interesting about programming is it's something you can teach yourself. You can hang out on YouTube, learn all kinds of coding things, data wrangling, data analysis. It is in theory possible to do it yourself, um, but in order to know what to learn, how to learn it, how to suffer through all of those terrible parts to get to all of the good parts, um, it's not computer science, it's not data science, it's a whole different kind of field, and I feel like personally um, it is very difficult to maybe emotionally get through it. Uh, without having the structure of something like a program that can kind of point you in the right direction and make sure you don't spend like 10 years going down a path that isn't actually relevant to the world of journalism. Uh, in addition to that, kind of as Jermil was saying, 
um, learning all of this tech stuff uh, in concert with journalism at the same time in journalism allows you to contextualize this stuff a lot more. Um, I talk to people who have been programmers for years or people who have been uh, journalists for years, and they always try to, you know, jump across into the other side and meet in the middle. Um, but by having it all laid out in front of you at the same time, when you're kind of taking your first steps into coding or your first steps into journalism, it just, it just makes everything make a lot more sense. Everything's relevant. Everything's applied. Great, thanks. And June, as a recent graduate of the program, maybe you can take us back to before you applied to tell us a bit about what you were doing before Columbia and what drew you specifically to the data program as you looked at the different options available here. Yeah, um, so before coming to Columbia, um, I worked in the journalism industry for a couple of years. Um, but on the other side, I was a, I was working in broadcast production. Um, started off at a small local PBS station in Minnesota and um, worked as a broadcast producer in both um, the United States and um, in South Korea, where I'm from. And um, about around 2020, so I got my like first like adult like broadcast producer job at, in like late 2019. And three months later, COVID happened and um, I was in South Korea and you know, it was a very intense time for like China and Korea at that time. And, you know, I, the, the kind of things that I, would co I was covering was like, oh, today this many people died. Today, this many people got, you know, contract, you know, it spread this many, you know, it's every like daily reporting, just numbers and numbers and numbers. And um, I was looking at other places, like, you know, whether it's the Times, the Post, the Financial Times. Um, and I just saw how, um, like how much amazing things that these outlets were doing using data and data visualizations in reporting health, um, public health and COVID. And um, I just thought to myself, like, I really want to do that, but I don't really have the skill sets to do that right now, just as a broadcast producer who was doing general news, um, which led me to kind of want to pursue that field and ended up applying later that year. I will say that COVID really enabled me to explain what I do to people in a way that wasn't possible pre-COVID, because now everyone knows, you know, have a map, put some color on it, take some rates, make a chart over time. Everyone's like, oh yeah, data journalism. I get it now. Whereas before it was a little bit mm -hmm. of blank stare sometimes. Totally. Yeah, and June, you mentioned you'd uh, done reporting and worked in uh, South Korea as well as in Minnesota uh, before. What was it like coming here to New York City to start doing reporting and diving into this program? Yeah, um, I think New York City is a really great place to, I mean, if you don't have like an extensive experience in journalism. I think New York City is a really great place to start just because there's so many stories out there. Yes, there are a lot of media, like um, you know, uh, media companies reporting on New York City. So I do think there's a bit of a, like an overrepresentation of New York City stories, but even then I think there's just so many stories out there that are getting underreported. So um, you can just pick anything that you're interested in and just go out and there will be a story on it. I remember my very first story in my reporting class was about um, energy affordability in the New York City area because I was just passionate about energy and utilities and how climate change is affecting them and was able to find a story that was relatively you know, less reported. And um, I might not have been able to do the same thing in other places. So yeah, it's a really great place um, with lots and lots of uh, story potentials. Mm -hmm. Great. And Soma and Drumel, maybe we can help um, our guests who are watching today and participating in this webinar learn a little bit more about how this program unfolds. It's a three semester program. How does it kind of build up all these data skills as well as the essential reporting and journalism skills throughout the time people are here? Drumel, you're in the midst of teaching a class right now in this very first semester. I don't start for what, two or three weeks. So if you want to tackle the beginning of this. Sure. Um, so you start out taking reporting one, which is the core reporting part of the curriculum, um, and you're doing shoe leather reporting. They send you out on the streets to interview people. You pick a story that that is of interest to you. Um, sometimes the professor has a beat that they're very well versed on, so they can sort of guide you throughout that throughout that beat. Um, and you do uh, reporting. Um, then the students come to me for a class called reporting two. Uh, and in that class, you bring uh, data and investigative techniques in. So you have professors who are seasoned investigative reporters, um, and you have data data folks like like myself. Um, and we're doing the basics of good data analysis, good methodology, working in Excel, like you know, start. But but in the context of pursuing a story, um, 
And then about halfway through the semester, uh, Soma comes in and drops a bombshell on the students. So I'll, I'll pass it on to Soma to talk about that. Well, I'll actually share with you uh, this visualization of what the classes are. So uh, you start taking two classes, one of which I teach in the second half of the fall. Uh, one is foundations, my class, the other one is data and databases. And these are your intro to programming classes. Um, they are kind of in contrast to what Jamil was talking about before. They are data classes that are much more just based on be you becoming Python programmers. Um, there is a bit of mixing in of things, you know, journalistic ideas, things like data integrity sourcing. Um, but the main idea is we are looking to equip you with the technical skills that you can use throughout the rest of your, well, your entire career, but also your time uh, in uh, the program. So it is an infinite amount of work all the time, Python, 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 uh, maybe some other programming languages sprinkled in there, but it really gets you the foundation of, you know, uh, data analysis and data wrangling, which means that when you get to the second semester in the spring, you're able to kind of use these skills that both came out of the more reporting focused classes along with the more coding focused classes in order to actually start producing good work. Um, so for example, you have uh, writing with data, which is a course where it is about writing stories involving data. Um, you have uh, Data Studio, which is a course that I teach where you crank out a lot of, shall we say, mediocre, quick turnaround uh, data journalism stories. You find a data set, you clean a data set, you analyze a data set, uh, you publish a story about it all in about two weeks, which is an infinitely quick period of time, especially when you're working on other classes uh, as well. You have a seminar and production class. Uh, which is your elective over the time frame that you are in the program here. Um, it's your chance to kind of specialize in, or not specialize, it's your, it's your chance to kind of jump out of the data journalism world and maybe go in a healthcare direction or human migration or anything like that. Uh, algorithms is Drew Mill's class, so I can hand it on back to you for that one. Oh, I love uh, I love the spring because students know enough code by this point to really be able to utilize it to do things. Um, and so by the time I have you in algorithms, uh, you know a, hand, a bunch of Python. This class doesn't focus on the code. It focuses more on the statistics and the methods. And so I, I would say I would say it's a combination of um, it, it's sort of your your foundational statistics and uh, machine learning course. And then when we hit summer, you already know how to do everything. So it's time to really go kind of crazy. Uh, so Points Unknown is a class that is about uh, geographic analysis and mapping. Uh, it's a full semester long. Uh, you have a master's project, which is, uh, this is, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk more about this, but it is a big long project that you work on uh, by yourself with a uh, advisor who is a real life journalist or a faculty member at the school. All of the other stories you worked on before were kind of, you worked on them in class, they were part of an assignment, maybe they were smaller. Master's project is really a chance to kind of spread your wings and do something magical. Then there's data computation and innovation too, uh, which is a course where you can have, uh, you can take two different paths. One can be in a uh, interactive visualization direction. Uh, where you make fancy web pages and fancy data viz, and the other one is a data-driven investigations class. So you can go one direction or the other. And even though we just talked about what everything was, this is, oh, come on, go to the next slide. This is my wild, uh, here's how all of the classes are connected to one another. Um, so they all play into one another, giving you the skills to use later on. It's not just three semesters of let's do an introduction to how a spreadsheet works, um, we're actively taking advantage of all of the skills that you learned in earlier semesters in order to put them to use later on. Yeah, and, and I would also add that, so I think you you undersell the mediocre quick turnaround things that you're talking about, because I think it's very important to build those muscles of having done something, to, to build that muscle memory of having done that over and over again. So our, it's a good mix of, my classes tend to be longer term projects, SOMAs tend to be quick turnaround projects, and those two things put together, um, you'll have a quality portfolio by the time you're done. Yeah, the the pitch to you for that one class is I would say it's a data visualization class. We're going to learn data visualization, but the real goal behind the class is to get used to the process of working with data in the course of putting together a story. 
because uh, even though there's a lot of similarities with the more traditional journalistic piece, it's also different enough um, that by you know trying to find data, fighting with websites to get the data, fighting with you know government organizations to get the data, uh, there's a there's a few more steps you might have to fight through uh, as opposed to a more traditional story. Mm -hmm. Great. And I see all these, you know, terms like uh, Python, coding, algorithms. If I kind of know what those are, but I've never done any of that before, um, is this program still going to be something I can jump into, even though this is all kind of new stuff to me? Absolutely. As the person who tried to go to school for computer science and was like, this is all awful. Uh, this is aimed to be the opposite of the experience that I had uh, in my early collegiate career. Um, where if you know how to turn your computer on, you're fine. You don't even need to know the terms Python. You don't need to know what any of this stuff is. Um, if you are passionate about doing journalism and there's a possibility that wrangling data or records uh, or data visualization or something like that can help you build a better portfolio, help you build uh, the kinds of pieces that you're looking to build in the world, it's the program for you. Yeah, and if that if you are advanced and you already know how to code and all of that, we have a separate dual degree program, which is a computer science journalism master's. That's for the more advanced students who sort of already have background in both of these things. Um, this program is very will start you from zero and build build up your coding experience. But even if you do have a background in doing some computery things, some tech things, you'll come in. I always have a student who comes in and they're like yeah, this is going to be easy. You know, I did some web development. I'll be fine. And three weeks in, they're like, what's happening? What is going on here? This is wild. Because like I said, data journalism is different from things like computer science, web development, data science. Uh, and so even if you do have a bit of a background in this stuff, there's absolutely something for you here. Great. And June, um, we went over these great visualizations of these different courses and the three semesters. Could you talk a bit about some of the highlights for you, uh, certain classes or projects you worked on that were things that you really look back on uh, with a lot of uh, vividness? <laughs> sure. Um, I would say like really the most memorable um, course, I think, has to be Data Studio just because it's just so intense. Like you're churning out stories every two weeks and you're at peak stress level, everyone's miserable. Um, but at the same time, you know, you, we all are kind of like in it together and every story you're doing something different. So there's a little bit of excitement that comes with it. And um, I think as a person who's very used to doing assigned stories, um, the fact that you're coming up with new ideas and new data, journalism, ide data journalism ideas every two weeks is really difficult. Um, but I think that was a, was a, you know, one of the highlights for me because, you know, it's an opportunity for you to really just go all out and like constantly do the stories that you want to do. Um, so we were going to say something. a link to data studio projects. I make everyone publish all of them online because I think getting over the, the shame factor is very important. Um, so this is, uh, if you go in the chat, it's a link to student projects from last year. And there's a lot of like notes about changing font sizes and things like that. But if you just click around, you'll be able to see some examples. I will say this is the first time someone hasn't been like, screw all of the data classes. The most important classes I took were just reporting classes all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, data Studio, sorry. Um, D data Studio was really memorable, but I also want to add a um, really helpful course for me was also um, algorithms. Um, I also came in with a little bit of coding experience, you know, knowing a little bit of Python, a little bit of, you know, um, JavaScript, but I had, have never learned like statistics properly before and algorithms was my introduction to that and really learning, like you can't just use data <laughs> to do journalism. Um, there's like the learning the ways to do it really rigorously and developing that methodology um, was really helpful learning the regression, um, and all of that. And uh, three weeks after I finished that course, I was actually just like using what I learned in Drumo's class into my real life, like newsroom experience. So that was really cool. Just like, oh, wow. Like I took, I'm able to do this now because I learned this like literally a month ago. So that was a cool experience. And Soma mentioned there's a class that all the data students can choose in the spring, a seminar in production that can kind of be about all sorts of different areas of the profession. What did you choose to take uh, for your spring class? 
I chose investigative reporting, which worked out really well because I was actually working on an investigative story at the same time. Um, so it, yeah, it worked out really well. So that course helps you sort of think about investigative reporting coming like from um, coming up with pitches, knowing what is an investigative story and what is not an investigative story and various kind of techniques in um, sourcing, um, reaching out to people, how to like organize all of your files and materials. Um, so yeah, that's the one that I took. Cool. And uh, Soma, you mentioned uh, the master's project in your uh, your slides there uh, earlier. Um, maybe we can go a little bit more in depth uh, with Soma and Drumil about what students have you know tackled as master's project topics uh, using data in the past uh, classes. Sure, um, Drumil, you want to? Uh, no, Soma, you go ahead and take that. You're, okay, you're sure. So the, uh, the master's projects uh, get off to a slow start in the spring semester. So your second semester, once you have a little bit of data under your belt. A little bit of reporting under your belt. Um, and it is you working with uh, one other person who's a faculty member or a you know, journalist out there in the world. Um, and they're your editor as you work through a project that is your own project. And I think that it's, it's always you go in as a data student thinking, this is going to be like a magic data-driven investigation. Um, because we spend so much time, it's always there's the programming and there's the viz and there's all this stuff. But it turns out that a story is really focused on reporting 99 times out of 100. Once you get into the ring, you think I have a data set that I want to analyze for my story. That's that's a topic. That's a data set that doesn't end up being a story. Um, and so you bounce around in all sorts of different directions before eventually kind of settling down for the full spring semester uh, where you get to be, or the summer semester, where you get to be working on it, um, you know, running around, reporting things out, finding data sets, analyzing the data sets for this one magic capstone project. And so my favorite, I realized, always end up having to do with sea life. Um, I always talk about one from uh, years ago that was about uh, the battle between Canada and Maine in the U.S. Uh, about lobsters and about like the sale of lobsters and the production of lobsters. Um, and then this year there was one where a student got to go to Alabama and like run around in like creeks and rivers and streams with some man with a giant beard uh, looking at like endangered species uh, and just like mollusks and just like it's it's you think of data journalism before you get in as being some subset of journalism about people who hang out in a basement uh, and look at monitors all day. But the data aspect or the programming aspect is just one part of many in the same thing as, you know, if you can look at a spreadsheet or even speaking another language uh, kind of helps you in your normal journalism job. And the same way that you might know how to speak. If I spoke uh, uh, Spanish, I could do a lot more stories than if I just spoke English. In the same way that once you learn Python, it doesn't necessarily change the kinds of stories that you can do, but it often allows you to go more in depth or more at scale than you would otherwise. And June, um, we can tell us a bit about your experience developing your master's project while you were here. Totally. Um, I, I second what Soma just said about a lot of the times it ends up being very reporting heavy um, because, you know, you. I feel like people mostly end up, you know, it's a big project. It takes a long time. So people, you know, tend to choose things that they're really interested in, um, which in my case, it was um, uh, this technology called direct lithium extraction, you, you know, it's called DLE for short. It's a way of mining lithium in a way that that's not as disruptive to the environment, like digging up a giant hole in the, in the ground. Um, and I ended up writing about this um, nascent technology that's being actively developed in the Southern California region. Um, you know, I did a lot of reporting. I talked to lots of folks, um, both in the community and the activists and researchers kind of scoping out what this technology means to the community who already lives there. And is this really, you know, it, it, could this be one of the bigger solutions to um, uh, uh, um, sourcing critical minerals for EVs and um, batteries. That was my story. Um, 
didn't have too much data component to it, to be honest, but um, I did end up making lots of maps using um, like the GIS um, software that I learned how to use. So um, that was a nice addition um, to, the, to the reporting that I did. And um, yeah, um, and the story actually ended up getting published after I graduated. Um, it, um, I published it to um, Inside Climate News and it was actually uh, on their top story for three weeks. So um, sometimes your you know master's project gets published and it gets really good attention and it feels really nice. And um, yeah, you feel like, oh, all those hard work has actually been worth it. <laughs> That's great. And what was it like working with an advisor who kind of you know, helps students uh, through that process? Yeah, um, my advisor, um, Jess, is a senior editor at Audubon Magazine. Um, she isn't like a climate or energy specialist, which I was slightly worried about in the beginning. But it turned out that it really didn't matter at all. Um, she really, even though her beat wasn't necessarily energy or uh, minerals, um, our advisor's main job is to help you shape the story because she, you know, she sees all kinds of stories every day and knows when, you know, the story's a little off or it needs a little more focus in certain areas. So, um, yeah, it was really nice. We met every week, every other week and, um, yeah, helped me make a pretty consistent progress. Cool, and before I uh, switch the question over to Soma and Juma, I thought I'd also ask um, June, a uh, thing I didn't mention before is that like all of our master's programs here at Columbia Journalism School, um, the grading here is pass fail. So what is it like working on all these projects without maybe having this letter grade hanging over each thing that you do? Um, <laughs> we, we always joke like, it's, it's pass fail, but nobody acts like it's pass fail. I, I don't know why, like something's motivating them. Um, so everyone works like so hard. They put all of their efforts and hearts into every single project. So um, yeah, so that pa pass fail doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, you can just kind of do whatever <laughs> and then get by because people are really interested in what they do. But at the same time, I guess that I personally felt like if I wanted to do something, that maybe is a little more difficult and I kind of know it's not gonna, it might not turn out very well. I'm still free to do it because the focus is more on learning and not just getting the grades. And I would say that's more, yeah, that's a pretty um, shared sentiment um, in, the, in the group. Yeah, I just wanna echo that. And that even once you leave the program, <clears throat> being a data journalist means learning new things all the time and things going wrong all the time. There's just like a constant life of beautiful suffering. Uh, and you are able to take risks in the program because you don't have to worry um, about grades in the way that you would in a traditional program. Um, so you say, oh, there's this one tool that I haven't used that seems interesting. If you really needed that A, you might do the safe bet. But because it's pass fail, you say, you know what? I'm going to try it. I'm going to learn something new. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I still was able to push myself more than I would otherwise. Yeah, I would I would add that um, school is great because it also it not just uh, for the grade, but like also you are able to do things that even editors at a newsroom may say this is too risky. Like you know, we I don't know if a story will pan out of this, and and there are things that I've been able to do since I got to a university environment that my editors would not have approved me spending like two weeks on. So very cool. And now taking a look on what happens after people finish this program, um, Soma and Drew Mill, maybe we can talk about, you know, we've only had about five classes so far graduate from the data program, but what are some of the things that some of our graduates have gone on to do uh, with the skills they've uh, they've gained in the data degree? They do everything. And I feel like this is the, the most disappointing response that I have to this, but in the way that data journalism is not a separate kind of journalism, right? It's just an extra component you can add on to a kind of traditional journalistic insight. You have people leave and they go be investigative reporters. You have people that leave and then they go work on visual teams, building interactives, maps, charts, graphics, things like that. Uh, you have people that go to small local uh, radio stations in the middle of the country. You have people that stay at, you know, giant media organizations on the coasts. You have people who um, do, you know, beat specific news. So let's say you just want to work in healthcare, or you just want to work in criminal justice or something like that. 
super narrow. And then, you know, there is data there. There are people who just work on local news where you can pull data sources from anywhere. So it really does, does run the gamut. Um, the best thing I can say that happened is we had a student who graduated and like right after she graduated, she won a Pulitzer. Um, and granted it was because, so she says, no, I just made some graphs for this one story. Uh, and then that story ended up winning. So I didn't really deserve it. And I say, don't say that because I get to say in meetings like this, oh yeah, Pulitzer Prize winning journalists come out of this program. It's, it's great. So if you want to win, uh, you know, the most esteemed prize in journalism, you could also do this program. And yeah, no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. It's fine. Great. And uh, June, what have you been doing? I know you graduated in August, so it's only been a couple months out, but what kind of work are you doing now? And are there certain skills you're already drawing upon from what you did at Columbia? Yeah, um, absolutely. I um, I just started this month um, uh, my fellowship at MIT Technology Review. Um, it's a newsroom owned by the MIT, but editorially independent. Um, it covers mostly technology, but focusing on climate change, um, biotech, and AI. And I'm on the climate change side of things. So um, I write about different kinds of climate technology and how they might or might not change the world. And um, it's it's been great. It's an opportunity for me to really dig deep into my interests, which you know it had I have been developing for for several years. But at the same time, definitely having the data skills has been you know people are very excited. I'm actually um, working on a scraping project right now with another beat reporter who specializes in technology in China. I'm scrape. I'm helping him scrape this um, Chinese job board website, specifically um, government works um, <laughs> related to satellite as like a proxy database for how much Chinese government is investing in building up the, their Starlink equivalent in China. Um, and there you are know, hundreds of job postings, there's so many of them. And um, uh, yeah, I'm helping um, scrape that website for him. And and that is, I think, a, a little more investigative in nature. And I get to collaborate in these um, projects with a different topics that's not necessarily climate change, but um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited to work on it. And, and that's what I wanna say about like having these skills. Um, yes, having a beat is awesome and I really enjoy reporting on it, but knowing how to scrape, knowing how to like build visualizations, it helps you integrate into the newsroom a lot more and become a more valuable reporter, I would say, because you can just help out so many people and make things happen that otherwise like wouldn't happen necessarily. Great. And um, since we have, oh, yeah, Drew. Oh, I was gonna say, June, do you want to talk a bit about your magic brand too? Oh, right. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's one thing. That's my day job. And um, on the weekends slash on the evenings, um, I'm working on a grant by the Brown Institute, which is an amazing, amazing thing, by the way. Like if you ever end up in Columbia, definitely um, look into them and um, uh, lean into them as a resource. Um, it's an institute of um, Brown Institute of Media Innovation run um, jointly by Columbia J School and Stanford Engineering. And we received uh, three other teammates and I received a magic grant to work on a project about um, public commenting process and using artificial intelligence and various um, data analysis tools to build a tool basically to help journalists utilize those comments um, more effectively. Um, and that's also been fun. So in the earlier stages, but the goal is to make something that's useful for journalists so that they can do um, investigative reporting more efficiently. So that's been going on. I actually met with uh, my partner, Laura, last night at like 9.30 p.m. and like started doing analyses, which um, is, um, yeah, we were like, why are we working at 9.30 at night? But also um, kind of fun at the same time. So, so Laura was also a data student. Um, they used this project as a project for the algorithms class as well. Um, so, mm -hmm. so you kind of can incubate these things. And then if you have a really good idea by the end of it, um, the Brown Institute offers up to $100,000 per project idea. So if you have something that, and, and that's for Columbia slash Stanford affiliates. So if you do have a really good idea that you think you want to launch into something real in the real world, um, you can apply for stuff like that too. 
Very cool. And since we have June here for this conversation, I thought I'd ask a question for all the people watching this who are, you know, they've heard about the curriculum, they've heard about career paths and things, but what's it like to be a member of like the data student community? And what's it like to be also part of the broader Columbia Journalism School community here? Uh, can you shed some insight into like what that kind of experience is like beyond just the, the classes and all that? Yeah. Um, oh my God. It's, it's awesome. I cannot say enough good things. It's so awesome. Um, you know, it's eight for, for us, it was 18 people. So kind of a small cohort, but really, and you take all of your classes together. So you suffer together. Um, it really, you know, builds relationships and it's a very different experience. I would say personally than just doing the MS program, um, because it kind of builds this tight knit cohort that you can depend on, um, and continue to hang out with, um, even after you graduate. So it's it's a really good experience. The, the community aspect is really real and you really kind of need that because the curriculum is so like hard <laughs> that you need that support um, for each other. But at the same time, I've also made like really good friends um, just in Stabil, MS. Uh, two of my other um, magic grant partners, they're Stabil graduates. And um, yeah, it's it's a really nice like community of people. J School, you know, the building itself, you're you're there and like everyone's working together at Brown. Everyone's just together in some sort of you know, the classroom. And um, I, I really enjoyed the community aspect, which I didn't expect. You know, I just kind of thought, oh, it's a graduate school. You know, everyone's gonna go and come out, and there's not gonna be that big of like a community friendship aspect of it. But I was really pleasantly surprised when I um when I went there. Great. And I know um, for the current class, uh, there's plenty of events going on pretty much every day in the building. Uh, were you able to take advantage of, you know, the different speakers and different lectures and workshops they were doing here too? Yeah, all the time. Um, the panels, I went there, all the famous people just like come to the J School, which is so nice for me. I just like go and, and they're just there. I was able to meet like a lot of my like you know, like professional heroes there. Um, I met, um, yeah, just so many of them. Like I met Zainab and um, other like data journalism folks that I've been following for many years. So that's just really exciting part. Great. And now back to uh, Soma and Drew Mill. Um, for people watching this and thinking about applying to the data degree program this year or in the future, um, what do we look for in a, like a strong application to this particular program? You mentioned already you don't need to have like a lot of, uh, computational skills or knowledge to be, you know, a good candidate for the program. What is it though that you do look for in someone who um, might be a good fit for this program? Yeah, I mean, one thing we're looking for is an understanding of what journalism is and what journalists do. So it's, you know, um, if you're just applying because you want to learn how to code, uh, that's probably not enough. You you probably need to to show that you have. Uh, an interest and dedication to the to the discipline. That doesn't mean you have to have been a journalist, although some people have been working journalists. But maybe you wrote something for the school paper, or maybe you you know participated in something that that um, is journalism adjacent. And then you kind of make a case for yourself for why you want to be a data journalist. Um, so we are really looking for people who are dedicated to the profession. Um, that's that's uh, one thing. So I'll pass it on to you for. Others. Yeah, um, it's definitely not about having, you know, a remarkable amount of experience uh, in any direction or being able to code or any of those sorts of things. Um, I like to think of it as, I mean, everybody who, you know, is part of the admissions committee has a slightly different direction that they want to pull things in. Um, but I personally feel like uh, it's a requirement is passion for, you know, the creation of a journalistic project or a journalistic product you have some sort of idea or something you are interested in that you would like to do. Maybe it's one specific sort of uh, project or is one, you know, here is the story I want to report out, the story of my dreams, the story that will win me all the prizes. Uh, or maybe it's just the idea of here is a type of story that I would like to do. Here's a sort of thing that I'd like to investigate, for example. Uh, because you don't necessarily know all of the things that you can do with data journalism skills until we actually teach you those skills. Um, so, you know, the lift, the lift isn't that much um, from our end, but it really is about passion. Because if you don't have that passion, the classes that I put you through that are an incredible amount of work, an infinite amount of work, are just going to be so sad for you. Um, but if you're interested in the topic, if you say, once I learn how to do this, I will be able to report out the story of my dreams, 
it will be able to pull you to the next level and you'll be able to make full use of everything that we teach you here. Yeah, our classes are incredibly varied. We have students who were English majors in undergrad, have never seen a spreadsheet before, are like pretty fresh out of school, uh, maybe work for their college paper. Um, and we have students who are like, um, you know, I was a physics major at the top university in China, or like I used to teach economics at NYU. Like, you know, we, we have a wide variety of students uh, with a wide variety of backgrounds, but somehow it works out because even if you do know some coding, even if you know enough econo economics to teach it at NYU, you, that doesn't necessarily mean you know how to turn it into a data story. And so um, everyone is learning you know, more or less from a different part of the curriculum. Um, so if you already know how to code, you may learn a lot from the reporting and kind of bringing that in. If you sort of have a reporting background, you may learn how to code and learn how to sort of integrate that. Um, but but I would say we have students from all backgrounds, uh, both in terms of uh, ages and experience with either of the parts. And it's also really interesting how when people come in, even if they do have reporting backgrounds, um, maybe the way that we do reporting at the J school is different from the way that uh, you know you were taught or you traditionally learned. Um, so no matter where you're coming from, there's always plenty of stuff to learn. Um, but yeah, just just put everything about yourself in those essays, uh, and we'll we'll pick you apart. <laughs> Uh, and June, since we have you here too, do you have any advice? You know, you you applied a couple cycles ago. Um, how did you approach your application? Uh, do you remember? Do you have any advice for potential applicants now? Yeah. Um, oh my God, that feels like forever ago. Um, <laughs> I, um, I I think I I I was very. Yeah, I I think I was pretty. Um, I emphasized my like the interest. I think. Um, I, I knew the the reason I wanted to be in journalism is because I wanted to write about climate change. And that's what I wanted to do in journalism. Not just like, I just want to be in journalism, but I want to pursue journalism because I care about this and that. Um, it could be public health. It could be, you know, I don't know, um, broader, you know, democracy in your country. It could be, um, you know, biodiversity. But for me, it, it was um, climate and energy and making that field a little more accessible for readers. And yeah, I think that's what I focused on. And um, I thought that that could really, yeah, um, express that passion aspect of it because journalism journalism, but um, you know, you do things with journalism and you, you go into it because you want to see certain kinds of differences, so. Hey, thank you for that advice. And so um, at this point, I turned on the chat function on uh, Zoom where you can send any questions to me, Ross, the host, and I will be able to raise a few that are um, pertinent to our conversation about this degree program. If you have any, uh, please put them there. And if you have other questions, I put a link in the chat for uh, signing up for other sessions about you know, application questions, particular things about the process or about educational financing. So that's a place where you can sign up for those other types of sessions. But for today, for this group, um, please put any questions that that you would like us to potentially um, answer right now. Um, but for now, a question I see here about kind of the, the balance in the data program between you know, reporting with data and also learning how to do visualizations, interactive maps, things like that. How much kind of emphasis is on both of those things in the program? I feel like we make up some number that it's like 60% uh, journalism and 40% programming -y things, but that's probably, that's, you know, we pull out of a hat. Um, I think that a, a big part of this is there are a few classes that are 100% focused on code, such as the two classes in the first semester. There are classes that are 100% focused on reporting, such as reporting one, uh, maybe some parts of reporting two, and maybe your seminar that you take in the spring. And the other classes <clears throat> are very much a mix between the two, and often you get to decide um, the amount that you put into it being reported versus the amount that you want it to be about, let's say, visuals. So for Data Studio, which we've talked about far too much, but in Data Studio, uh, you are producing a piece over two weeks and you might take those two weeks and choose to interview some people, get some quotes, um, do some background and actually report out the story. Whereas some other people might say, I found this really cool visualization tool that I'm going to spend two weeks playing with in order to produce a project. Um, so it's really, you do have the ability to, within the classes that you take, specialize in being, you know, 
or let's call it focusing a little bit more um, on one aspect or the other. Do either of you have any ideas about, you know, what the a numeric split between the two would be? I would say like once you're in the program, so I teach a lot of the mixed classes where you're kind of doing everything all at once and you stop thinking about it like that. And, and this is kind of one of the things I tell my students is the biggest mistake you can make is to think, okay, interviews, data, like write it up or data interviews, write it up. Like your data is going to lead you to questions, which is going to force you to call people. Those people are going to say things that's going to make you want to go get more data, like look at it slightly differently. Um, so, so I think you stop thinking about it as like two different things at some point. And it's really like this cycle of going back and forth between the data and the reporting in order to tell your story. We had a question about the overlap between our MS, our broader MS program, the two semester program and this data program. Um, the person is wondering, you know, are there classes that are only for the data cohort? And the answer I believe is definitely yes. A lot of the ones that Thelma went over are uh, distinctively for this particular group. Um, but there are some, I guess, business and uh, history, law and ethics. Those are all core courses that all the MS students will take together in different groups. So you get to know people from different cohorts, whether it's the broader MS, the Stabile, the documentary program, the part-time program, uh, maybe in those. And then I think the other one would be that seminar and production class, right? Uh, that's one where you potentially could have um, other MS students in there. I might be forgetting one or two, but otherwise I I that, that's it yeah um but additionally you're in the same building all of the time and you do meet folks across the different programs absolutely and if you're someone who doesn't necessarily want to take the dive into the data ms there are data courses that are offered um in the the general ms program they're not nearly as in depth and you don't get to focus for as long on these sorts of things but uh columbia you know loves loves it da it's data it's an integral part of being a journalist these days so great and then a question um just to expand a bit you know we talked about the brown institute and the magic grants um what other things does like the Brown Institute offer? And as in addition to that, the Tau Center, which Drew Miller, you're the assistant director of, what do those two um, you know, centers and institutes uh, provide for people interested in computation, journalism, digital journalism, and all that? Yeah, I can take that one. So um, we have two big data-driven research institutes here. There's also a bunch of other research institutes across the school, like uh, the DART Center and, and all, all kinds of other uh, groups that focus on other things. But here in the data part of the building, uh, we have Brown and Tau. Um, the way I describe it is Brown traditionally builds stuff and Tao traditionally researches things and like writes reports and that sort of thing. Um, Brown Institute also, uh, together between Brown and Tao, we have a series of events all, all year. We have Tao teas at Tao Center where um, a lot of times you come in, uh, sometimes it's on a Friday, sometimes on a Saturday, you'll have workshops. Um, there was one we had last, last semester with working with satellite imagery, for example, and students got to meet an engineer who works on satellite imagery and then dive in. They all got accounts on, on a satellite imagery tool and, and started to learn how to use that for their journalism, um, which some students are still doing today. Um, Brown Institute also is holding, um, <clears throat> we have a reading group on AI and journalism. We meet uh, on the second Wednesday of every month for a little hack where we just all get together and like hack around on um, large language models and AI, which is one of the things that's going on, um, sort of transforming the field right now. Um, so you get a chance to kind of use that stuff. Um, we also have research assistant positions and that sort of thing, um, but but we're uh, kind of the the your your way to get in touch with what's happening uh, sort of at the cutting edge, um, doing research on things like misinformation, disinformation, and um, uh, you know local the local news ecosystems and stuff like that. Great. And then a question. I know we talked about a bit about the um, intersection of investigative journalism and data. I know um, June took that class on investigative project and um, that kind of thing. What is is this program well suited for people who want to really do investigative work with data, particularly? Yeah. So reporting two, which is a class I'm teaching right now, is co-taught between data and investigative. So it's myself and an investigative reporter, Denise Ajiri. Um, and so you have the the option to really dive into investigative reporting there. Um, you still get access to all of the investigative reporting resources, all the brilliant investigative reporters that are in the building. You know, they will help you with your stories. You can schedule office hours with folks who are available. And then again, in the summer, you have an option to take a, another class that is almost entirely focused on da data and investigative reporting. Um, so yeah, uh, so I'll pass it on to you, but we, we have plenty of students who 
um, really want to be investigative journalists, but also want to be well versed in data. And uh, they kind of try to decide between the stibial, the investigative program, and the data program. And some end up over there, some end up over here. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. And I think that the the one sad, sad shortcoming of the programs that we offer at Columbia is that they are not 10,000 years long. Um, so you only have a year, you have a year and a half. Uh, and we have to pack a lot of stuff in there um, because if you are learning how to program and you're learning how to be a reporter, trying to tackle that in three semesters is, is a big ask. Um, and so there are a million different aspects to journalism, whether it is investigative, whether it is data-driven. Um, and I would say there's there's no wrong answer because there's always plenty to learn and plenty of ways to you know add to your skills after you graduate. Um, so I wouldn't worry about one or the other, but uh, investigating or being an investigative reporter is probably what half the class wants to do every single year. Um, so it's absolutely, uh, I would say, the norm even for folks in the data program. I, I would say investigative product projects take a long time and they're very involved. And so one of the ways you can approach the program if you want to be an investigative reporter is utilize all of the assignments you have going up into the summer to kind of analyze that area of interest, you know, you kind of learn about the data sets, you learn about the agencies, you build visualizations, so on and so forth, and then really investigate something for your master's project if you really want to dive in. You can, you know, because these things take so long, sometimes if you start early, then you can build towards something that's deeply investigated for a master's thesis. Mm -hmm. Great. And then uh, another question about people who might be interested in also exploring a bit of either like audio or visual journalism while they're here, are there ways to do that and also do the data curriculum? Um, yeah, there's a seminar and production class that's available to them, right, Soma? That's like yes. a, you take podcast or video, or you have you have an elective course, um, and you can use that towards um, whatever. I, I think there's what is it? Audio. I think documentary is also included in there. Um, um, a multimedia storytelling class, I think, which would be um, you know a, a short video uh, making class. So people interested in that, uh, or photojournalism, podcasting, as Drew Mill said, and um, radio workshop things like that. I know there was a student, uh, Asim, a few years ago who did radio workshop and the data program, and did a lot of great work in both. So yes, there are options uh, for people who do want to you know get a taste of other areas of the profession while you're here. Um, they're probably intensive those courses too, so it's kind of a thing to buckle up for. But it's worth it if that's what you really want to do. Um, in the program. Well, great. Well, I think we're coming up towards the end of the, the session right now. Um, so I put in the link earlier for people who want to sign up for some other events. Um, you're welcome to come into you know, any of our admissions and financial aid um, online events and some of our in-person events. And I know uh, Drew Mill uh, will be offering a um, sample of class online on October 27th. You can get the link to that and uh, get the sign up for that in that link as well. We'll send out some e-blasts soon to sign up for it on uh, data visualizations using uh, chat GPT which will be a lot of fun um, to participate in. And I think uh, Soma, we'll probably be doing something a little later in the fall as well that we'll uh, put on the calendar soon. So I'd like to thank uh, everyone, our two faculty members and June for uh, offering such great you know, uh, comments and insight into the data degree. And for people interested in applying for the program, just keep in mind that the deadline to apply uh, this particular cycle will be uh, December 15th. So there's still um, more than two months uh, ahead to put together an application. As people know, uh, or hopefully know, uh, there's no GRE required to um, apply for our master's program. So you don't need to sit for any tests like that. Um, we just uh, you know, would encourage people to get that process started, but luckily you have a lot of time to listen to our faculty, hear from our alums, and come to our sessions to get any more you know, guidance that you're looking for in the coming weeks uh, as you think about applying. So plenty of time left. Um, reach out to us with questions anytime. We're happy to uh, take those, and uh, we hope that you will join us for more events coming up in the future. Thanks again, uh, Soma, Drumil, and June. Uh, great event. Uh, have a great rest of your uh, day um, or evening, wherever you might be, and we look forward to seeing you at more events uh, in the near future. Bye now. Thank you.